So uh, this is an impromptu standby presentation. If you're here for the, uh, the scheduled presentation, I'm sorry to disappoint, um, but hopefully this will be interesting as well. So uh, this is uh, essentially about um, allowing us to remaster or reformat 360 3D content that's been captured with a 360 3D camera into a format that we can see on a widescreen display such as this in 3D or a desktop display or a 3D home TV. So um, um, the, the, sorry, the, the 360 3D format is a high impact format, um, but there are limited screening opportunities for screening that type of content. You can screen it with a head mounted display and there's lots of head mounted displays available now, but it's hard to do it at scale to a large number of people. There's a, a, a theatre in uh, Perth, which is uh, part of the West Australian Museum, which has uh, used 80, 80 of the Oculus Go headsets at a time. So it is possible, but it's, it's, it's quite difficult to manage and it's, it's uh, a big expense to get that many um, headsets in one place. So being able to remaster 360 3D content to a 16 9 3D format allows the content that you've produced to have a wider audience and, audience and, and more screening opportunities. So let, let's look at two examples of how that's been done, and they've done it very differently. So it's, it's, it's an interesting um, uh, two case examples. So the first one is a short film called Impact Beyond the Night Sky. It's been uh, directed and produced by Kath Dooley, uh, along with her co-producer Suzanne Ryan, and um, it's a, a film produced at Curtin University. And the subject is uh, a planetary scientist by the name of Katerine, Katerina Milkovic. Um, it's roughly eight minutes in length, and it's been filmed, um, the live action sequences at least, have been filmed with an Insta360 Pro camera. So that's, that's the camera here, and around the camera head, there are six wide-angled, fish-eyed lensed cameras. Um, each one of those um, records a video stream, and then it is post-processed to generate a 360 3D format. There are a series of 2D 360 sequences in there, which have mostly been um, obtained with permission from NASA. So that's not the subject of, of our particular um, uh, discussion here, but uh, those uh, sequences are part of the film. Um, so the basic technique that um, we've used with this particular film is that the processing um, of the raw camera footage from those six cameras um, produces an over-under equirectangular 360 3D view. So on the, on the top will be the left view, which is in equirectangular format, those unf unfamiliar with the Yekka rectangular format, it's like the Makeda projection in um, uh, mapping, whereby the North Pole is spread right across the top and the South Pole is um, spread right across the bottom. And in the middle here, you know, if you, you trace from the full uh, left to the full right, it's a full 360 as we move around. Um, and the top image is the left, the bottom image is the right, and that's in a single um, video container. It can be separate left and right files, but uh, usually it's a single container. That is then played back, usually on a head-mounted display. Um, now, what we're doing here to generate a, three, six, sorry, a 3D 16-9 version is we have a little window or a crop window that moves around that. That uh, crop window can vary in size or position. You can um, animate the position of it around, and um, um, we can also do it in 3D, so it, it picks the appropriate piece from the top and the bottom to produce a 16 to 9 uh, 3D version in over-under format as well. It uh, could be side-by-side, side, but um, it's usually just uh, over-under in this particular approach. All right, so um, we're able to actively select the window position, um, so if um, the action moves around, we can actively move that around and make sure that window follows the most interesting bit. Um, obviously with 360 content, it's all around you. People have usually only got high eyes in the front of their head, so they're going to be missing something anyway. So being shown in this, inf in this format is not a total loss, but uh, obviously it's, you're not getting that full look around capability, but it's, it's better than uh, not 
being able to screen it at all. All right, so let's look at the software workflow. To generate the um, extra, extra rectangular 3D um, uh, footage, um, primarily we use the, uh, the Insta360 Pro um, software that's bundled with the camera for generating that from the six cameras. And then um, to do the, uh, the conversion from the 360 version to the 16 to 9 version, we used Vegas Pro, which is now owned by Magix and used to be a Sony product. And uh, it's natively stereoscopic aware, so it, uh, it, it uh, facilitates that uh, uh, 3D process uh, much easier. And you can also do uh, preview within the, uh, uh, the user interface as well. The other film is a um, piece from Takashi Sekatani uh, from Stereo Eye in Japan called Little Planet in Stereoscopic 3D. And it has been filmed with a Kandao Obsidian R 3D 360 camera. So um, similar in many respects. It's got six lenses around a horizontal axis, and um, um, those are continuously recording as you're moving, or not moving, or the, the you know um, as as the action is happening. Um, the software workflow in this case is very different. Um, um, Takashi has used the Kendall Studio to stitch uh, the footage, and also generate a depth map. And this is where the critical difference between those two is. Um, I should mention that with the approach we've used here, we cannot go to the poles. Um, the 3D effect would be lost if we went down to the pole. Um, so we've got to keep it around the equator area. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly centered on the equator, but um, um, or this, the, this, the vertical center. Um, but we've got to be careful not, we can't actually go down to the poles. That's what this approach can do since we're generating, since um, Takashi's generating a depth map. And after the depth map is generated, he uses a piece of software called Stereo Photo Maker. If you don't know about it already, make sure you are. It's um, from a very talented individual in Japan uh, called Masuji Suto. Um, and uh, it can be used for all sorts of different stereoscopic workflows, including the, uh, the Looking Glass 3D display recently and a range of other 3D formats. So it's a very capable piece of software, and uh, Takashi has used that uh, to process um, his uh, footage into a, um, a format that we can view on this screen. So then it generates from the depth maps, uh, regenerates stereoscopic 3D images. So I would like to highlight some of the anomalies that are present in these two videos, and um, if you're able to offer or know of any solutions to these, I'm um, all ears. With the, um, the impact film, um, there are some stitching errors present um, in the, um, the Insta360 Pro software. Um, there are some vertical parallax instances introduced when the stitching is performed. And um, theoretically, it shouldn't do that, but it does. So um, if there is a Another software that can do it better than I'd be very interested to know what that is. Um, but um, that will explain why you see some vertical parallax on the screen when you see that film. Um, it varies depending upon the image and uh, uh, different parts of the screen, so it's, it's a little bit unpredictable. And I, I suspect it's part of the feature matching and warping process that's used to stitch between the, the multiple cameras. Um, uh, the other film um, has some depth at map errors, and since you'll notice some jittery depth in parts of the image, particularly around the borders. Um, so uh, um, keep an eye out for that as well. Um, yeah, thank you for, uh, for attending, and if you have any suggestions or uh, comments, then uh, please uh, have a chat afterwards. We're run running right on time for the next presentation. So thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Andrew.